Hey guys, Josh. Happy Little Landscapes. Back again with a little beginner tutorial today. The less than 40 minutes-ish. And, uh, you know, you get to learn how to paint this big moon, this dark kind of stormy looking sky. Throw some stars in, make your mountains, do your trees, add the cliffs with the waterfall and the cabin. So if you've never painted any one of those things before, stick with us. We're going to show you how to do it. And uh, I hope you guys are ready. Get your colors out. Check the description for all the colors and the brushes that we're going to need. Get your stuff out. Let's get ready to paint. Like this. Bow. Hey guys, what's happening everybody? Another time lapse Facebook video and a YouTube video all at the same time. My brain almost exploded when I had to edit the last one. But we're gonna, we're gonna do it again. Today we've got a 11 by 14 inch canvas. I have no idea what I'm gonna paint. Like honestly, no clue. I know I wanna have like a big moon in the sky. But besides that, no idea. So, don't know what brushes we're gonna use, but I will list all the all the tools that we used inside the YouTube description. So follow my YouTube channel, uh, subscribe. You can find me on Facebook uh, at Happy Landscape Art. You can find me on Instagram at Happy Low Landscapes. And uh, you know the YouTube guys, you've already seen it. I haven't seen it yet, so we're gonna make it up as we go along and see what it looks like when it comes out. This is literally it. A little bit of dry paint from the last time we painted. And uh, didn't want to throw all this away, so we figured we'd make another video. If you Facebook Livers have any suggestions on what you want to put into the painting, I'm open for suggestions because I literally have no idea what we're going to paint. But uh, also go to my Etsy store, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. And uh, the more you guys support me, the more canvases I can buy and keep bringing you guys free videos. Eventually I'm going to run out of canvases if no one supports me. So get to the store and uh, order something, right? That'll help. Let's see. We're going to go real dark. We're going to do like a, like a moonlit, you know, or have a moon in our sky. Then we will go dark paint. So I mix the blues and the blacks here. And we're gonna go up into the corners at first, just like always. Nice, nice dark black. Now you could do this on a black canvas. I could have. I've only got one left, so I didn't want to uh, didn't want to use that canvas. We just cover over the top, and then we'll be set to lock it down and rock and roll.
nice little beginner one that anybody could do. You know, everybody's got some plastic cups laying around the house. So we'll make a moon out of it. That looks pretty good the way it is right there. Got to cover over our sides, because what do we say, guys? Always cover over the sides. You never know if someone's going to buy your painting, if they're going to keep it covered, you know, if they're going to frame it, or if they're going to be walking down the stairs and be able to see the top or the sides. So you always want to finish the sides. It's looking pretty good, actually. We have all these colors on our palette, but I'm, I, I doubt that I'm going to use all of them. Yo. So right now we basically use black and blue to kind of make our little stormy sky. It's not looking too bad. I'm going to wash our brush here. For everyone that doesn't know, we use Jasco brush cleaner. You can use low odor mineral spirits or Dawn dishwashing liquid and water. Uh, but I like to use the brush cleaner. It seems to get them a little bit more clean with less product, you know what I mean? With the mineral spirits, it seemed like I'd have to dip it a few times in order to get the brush clean. So this brush cleaner stinks a little bit more than the low odor mineral spirits, but seems to work a little bit better for me anyway. Just an idea, but let's see if we can't make like a yellowish. Same thing how we did our our um, uh, with that filbert brush where you push it in and you rotate. We're gonna see if we can't do the same thing with this one-inch brush. Try to fill in these gaps Just by pushing in and letting all the bristles kind of rotate around. But I don't want to have it too yellow. So we may throw some more white in there, but this seems to be working okay. And just push and rotate and push and rotate, trying to stay inside of our little circle, right? That is the goal. That doesn't look too bad, though, for being... I'm having to use a Dixie cut. Can't take the white brighter. These yellows will just give us these little shadows where, you know, the sunlight's bouncing off the moon in different places. We could make it a red moon or a green moon or a blue. You can literally do whatever you want. And that's the best part about painting to me is you don't have to copy somebody. You can literally do whatever it is that you want to do and have it look good. So we'll put a, little, put a little face in the moon, right? Gotta have the man in the moon. Clean off that brush. Now maybe for these guys. Just take it and just play with it till you like it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be perfect. You can use your two inch brush or your one inch brush. Whatever you're more comfortable with. Swipe that away. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe I want a little bit wider. We'll come in with the white paint. We're literally making this up as we go along. Never painted a moon like this before. But I like to show you guys different things you can do to make it, you know, work. There's different techniques you can use. Try something new. You know what I mean? It doesn't always have to be the same thing. You try something new and see how it turns out. You might just like it. And then you'll figure that out for the next time that you go to paint. And you're like, oh, I should try that again. That seemed to work pretty good last time. That's all I do, really. There we go. Nice little sloppy, kind of yellowish moon color back there. But I'll literally try something, and if it doesn't look how I want it to look, I won't do that on the next painting. Or if it does, I'm like, cool, i got to remember to do that. So always try. Don't be afraid to try, because what happens if we don't like this one? We'll take it and paint it black. 
and then we'll do another space scene or we'll do something else, you know what I mean? something out if I want to make it look a certain way. Otherwise, a lot of the best paintings that I had that I paint just come from making stuff up right as we go along. Alright, we're going to take our blue and our black and our crimson, mix those up together, maybe a little bit of the brown. Put a different color blue in there. You just want to mix it until it's a nice dark color. And we'll come in, we'll do like one, one mountain Maybe one tree, maybe a little path. Just a nice little easy one today. So I know I want mine to kind of cover over. So let me go up like this. Just cover over that moon. So it's just sinking behind the mountain back there. And yours doesn't have to look exactly the same. So if you don't have a certain color or anything, it doesn't have to look perfect. Just kind of showing you what to do to make it look like this. It's really neat. Again, you don't want to have your mountains be these sharp points, like pyramids back there, right? Throw a little rounded top on it. it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And pull all that paint down. You know, just very lightly come in with our one inch brush and just very lightly. We're not pushing a whole lot because the harder you push and drag, the bigger your mountain's going to get, right? So we just want to grab it a little bit, kind of pull it down, and come on this side, we go this way, pull it off to the side. Just this very soft touch. You don't want to have too much pressure there. And that way you'll get this kind of foggy-ish look down around the bottom of it. Nice dark mountains. All we're really worried about is what the top line looks like, right? As long as we're not coming out of our top line, the bottom can be as messy as you want it to be. And we'll just take it kind of back and forth. You can do the circles like this, just kind of make our fog up out of the bottom here. Over the ends like that. Go over the side. That's the best part about painting me. Like we've already, we've almost got a completed painting. And we had no idea what we were going to do to start. You know what I mean? When it 
take I'm gonna take a little liner brush, a couple, a little bit of liquid white on it. We're gonna throw some far off stars off in the distance, just in our darkest bits of our our paint, just by touching. The more you push in, the bigger your star is gonna be. So just vary your your touch back and forth. So you got some bigger ones, some brighter ones, some dimmer ones, they're more far off in the distance. And just like that, we've got a star full, uh, cloud, a sky full of stars. There we go. A couple stars off in the distance back there. Okay, I like my wintry scenes. Still a little bit cold out everywhere, so we're gonna go with some snow on these mountains. Make up some shadowy color with the blue and the white. And then always throw a little bit of black in just to dull that bluish color. Doesn't You don't wanna have it be super blue. Okay, we'll take a little bit of it, just a little bit on the edge of the knife, and we're gonna kinda of come in and decide where our shadows are. And we got one off to the side over here. We can see how we're holding the knife. If your canvas is straight up, hold it straight up. If it's laying on the table, hold it down flat like that. Otherwise it will kind of scrape away and you won't have these cool little details. And the knife just does it on its own. You get your pal, you get your, your uh, knife full of paint and you just kind of drag it across just very lightly and whatever deposits onto the canvas is what you want to leave there. You don't want to overdo it. Otherwise, you'll start to kind of smush all these cool little breaks that we've created you know, on our own here. And I always like putting my shadows in first because then you can go back and play with the highlights. You don't have to do your whole white highlights and then come in and just get these little bits of, of snowy area. What we're going to do too is just the littlest bit of yellow in with our white snow. Never eat yellow snow, right? But if this big moon is out here casting light, I want to have you know bits of yellow that are kind of reflecting that color. Let's see. I'll just literally come down however you want, wherever you think that moonlight is hitting. That's where you want to put a little bit of your, your yellowy white highlights, right? And always leave some dark areas. You don't need to cover everything. You don't want everything to be covered. You gotta have some of that, you know, light and dark in order to have your depth. You know what I mean? You know, someone in the old Etsy shop. You can use the small knife. You can use the big knife. You can use a butter knife if you wanted to. Literally, can use whatever you want. Take a bit of that kind of whitish, yellowish paint. And just mush it in here around the bottom. Make a big some fog out of that. Take our one inch brush, kind of swipe up in the direction that we laid these little highlights down. So if you came up, you know, if you came down this way, go up. If you came down this way, then go up this way. And it just kind of blurs what the bottom looks like. And then you can take, you can do it like Bob does. Just kind of tap in just by pushing down, letting the bristles bend. Or you can come in and you can do your little circles just very lightly. You don't want to blend it all the same. You don't want it to, you know, be all the same color. You want to have these lighter areas and darker areas in there, especially in your fog. This canvas is like so thirsty. It's swallowing up all my liquid white. You want to be able to have these oil paints slide all over this canvas, so you got to have it slick. Take some of that liquid white and just come up here into our fog. Very lightly fluff it. Okay. Let's take a bit of our the same kind of mountain color, but we'll throw in some green. We'll have like these far off, real dark green trees way back in the distance. Right, mix it up. It's gonna look black. The paint will still look black, but it will be a different color. So don't worry about that. It's not going to be the same as our mountain color anyway. All right, get it on both sides of the fan brush. And then, who knows, let's come in like this, a little bit taller than our 
mountain back here down into our fog. Just kind of popping down like that. Every so often, go back and get more of that color. When you start to run out, come in and just make your trees. Now we've got all this fog behind our trees, which makes the mountain look like it's further away. Over along the sides. All the way across. Nice little easy one. You don't have too much detail. Right, I want to fill in all this stuff around the bottom. Make it nice and dark so you can't see through it. I'm going to leave your gaps and stuff up here where you can see through the paint, but down around the bottom you don't want it very, very translucent, transparent. Take our brush, let's just swipe it up, a little bit of pressure, and that just makes the tops of the trees real sharp. Right? You can come in. Same thing, just fog it all up. All right, but you want your fog at different heights. You don't want it to be straight across. And so every so often, come up. Again, we can take just very lightly, swipe up, over over the bottom. Just like that. We could have water in there. You could have you know, snow, you can have a hill coming down like this, you can have a little walkway, totally up to us what we want to do. Chris says small waterfall. Small waterfall. Right, well, in order to have a waterfall, we need to have something to hold up the water. So, let's make a little, little mini mountain over here. Let's take our black, it's like a little ledge to come out. Drop the water right off of that. Just literally throwing it down, dropping our color on. We can take and just kind of blend it in very lightly. You want to have some fog or something underneath it. Do like a little cliff over. on our thing. Again, I didn't want this to get too crazy because we're kind of doing this for our, our beginners. If you guys want to get nuts, we will get nuts! We got these old cliffs over here. Let's say, anyway. Which means that the trees behind it are either standing on top or they're gigantic. A little cliff and we're going to throw our water off the side right there. Crazy bluish dark water down here. And then we'll throw a cabin off there. Okay. Alright, if we're gonna have some water coming off. up this brown and white, what's left of the brown anyway. A little bit of blue in there too just by accident. And we'll come back and we'll throw these far off little cliffs. And don't have to go all the way to the bottom. We're holding the knife very straight up right now. Very vertical. See this side there's a bit of rock top here. Always some on the sides because we have to finish the sides, you guys. <clears throat> and then why don't we take our little fan brush and we're going to drop like there's some water coming off there. And right in between those two. Just a little bit. A little waterfall. Right? Just by pulling down and then we're going to come in Grab some white, just very lightly, just like we would do with our knife. And you could do it with your knife if you wanted to. Just very lightly drop some of that thick white or paint on. Take a little bit of our liquid white. Just drop it on 
want it di you don't want it to be the same. You want it to be different. And down around the bottom, you can make some splash or some kind of you know little foggy, misty area where it's where it is landed, and now it's just making all this mist. You know what I mean? Covering up over the top. Nice and textured. We can bring our land in over here. Figure out something for back there. We can just take our, uh, our little micro liner brush, uh, micro fan brush. Just come in. Make a little bit of far off for us back here. Just so we've got something for our water to kind of sit behind. Maybe it's a little bit taller. differences in color guys. Okay, we're going to bring something else down in over here. Chris says you're doing a fantastic job. Oh, thanks Chris. It looks lovely. I'm just going to take in with the, the blue here, the same blue we made the water with. I'm just going to kind of highlight these trees just a little bit so they kind of stand out away from that forest back there. Maybe every so often we'll put a couple of these little lighter blue bits right back in there. crimson and black compared to the green ones that are back there. All you want to do is just change up what the color looks like. So when someone's really looking at it, they'll be able to see. Is that, is that old <laughs> thick, chunky paint out of there? What time are we at right now? the time on that video. The time is... Yeah. Alright, we're going to do a little cabin. We want to have like the small edge of the knife, in my eyes anyway. 31 minutes. Okay. Come over. The roof goes back this way. And you don't want to have a whole lot of paint on when you're doing your cabin because then you got to go in and highlight the sucker with different different colors. So you don't want to have a whole lot. Use our little filter brush here to make it easier. It's rock solid. And you got the front of our house right there. Got the side, got the roof. Also, you can 
up the crimson and the green. Crimson and the sap green and just really mix them up good and that will turn into this beautiful kind of reddish brown color. Take some of our white, mix it in. I'm gonna show you guys, you get this kind of brownish color. little bit in there and then we're going to use the small edge of the knife again just kind of come down again it's nighttime it's very dark don't have to have a whole lot of highlights here and over on this side we'll make it just a little bit darker because this bit's in the shadow for it. Just like you do when you're on your mountain, just let it break. This will give you practice with the small edge of the knife, kind of letting it work the same as the larger edge. And I'll always come over here and just on this, just on the edge there, we'll just put this little indication of white snow. Not too bad. Come scrape out an area for your door. For this one, we'll put a little window in there too. For the door, just come back with your dark, dark color. The window, we can come back with our yellows. Just like that. And you can always go back over and fix with your brown paint. Because this is a very small, very small little window. But there you go, little window. Right with our cabin, what we'll do is take and pull out a little bit of the bottom of it there. We've got these trees, we've got the water down here. So what we need is kind of something to stand in front. You've got all this fog around the cabin. It's far off trees, we've got our cliffs back here with our waterfall. Since everything is snowy, we might can put you know, a little bit of snowy highlights on our rocks and stuff. If they're not as bright as you want them to be. There's a little bit of snow that kind of cascaded over the edge of these things, you never know. Just like that. Okay, got our water down there. Well, we put like giant tree and do whatever we want to. Let's get up there into our dark colors. Crimson, the blue, the black, just right onto the brush so it's, you know, you get these differences. And then maybe right here, a little bit taller than the house. Come down, nice little evergreen tree. Super textured though. Let me do another one. Super textured bush. Big old sucker kind of comes in front of our water line over there, so we can't really tell where the water stops back here. You want it to be nice and thick, kind of sticking off the canvas. That'll help us when we go to highlight it. Our 
liquid white, mix it with the titanium white, just pull it down in one direction, and then tap your, your brush into it so it's nice and thick and goopy. And then just come up onto the top. You don't want to cover everything, remember, you gotta leave, leave, you know, your shadows there. You don't want them. Cover over everything, and then it's just gonna be just a splotch of white. something you can try that technique with the uh, with the cup you know showed you how to do the mountains we got these trees we even took a request and got a little waterfall way off back there put some bouncing kind of mist in here and uh, through even through a little cabin in so if you guys like this painting subscribe to my YouTube channel the more subscribers I get the more you know paintings I'll be able to bring to you guys go to my Etsy store etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art follow me on facebook follow me on instagram at happy landscape art on facebook at happy little landscapes on instagram and of course go to my etsy shop etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art subscribe the more subscribers i get the more i can bring you guys okay so don't be a knob and subscribe just kind of fill this in this last little bit around the cup just some white. I'm gonna stay in our lines, right? Stay in the lines. There we go. So, you guys take care. Have a good one. We're gonna do the uh, YouTube intro and everything else. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. Like my page, share this post, put it in all the art rooms that I'm not in. Grab people, bring them to the YouTube channel, right? I can only reach so many, so I need you guys to reach the rest. And uh, besides that, babe, you want to hit that camera right there, the Facebook camera? See you guys later.